Hello boys and girls, this is Daniel for Rock the JVM and in this video I'm going to share why contravariance is so hard or confusing and I'm going to try to make it slightly less so. So this video assumes that you already know the basics of Scala generics but you've used them only in their basic form like generic collections or simply attaching a type argument to a class or a trait to make it generic so to speak. This video is particularly good for you if you haven't dived into variants yet or consider variants as confusing or simply purely academic. As with the other videos, I will recommend that you follow along with my code and even play and improve my code on the screen. And if you've ever need the ideas that I'm going to share, simply come back to this video. For your convenience, this video is also available in written form at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog. So that being said, let's get into the code. I'm in IntelliJ IDEA where I've created an object that I've called why is contravariance hard and uh, you can make this an entry point to your application by adding a main method to it. So I'm going to add a main method and uh, if you're following along with me you can simply play with the code that I'm going to share. Alright, so as I mentioned earlier, this video is perfectly suited for you if you've seen generics before in the style of if I declare for example a list of type list of int and uh, on the right hand side I would say list with one, two, three. This list is a generic piece of logic and I have typed it with the int type meaning that this collection can only store integers. We've made the list type generic because the same piece of logic is applicable to int, string, person or whatever other type. We don't need to invent separate collections for those. We can reuse the same piece of logic, which is why we invented generics in the first place. So I'm assuming this is already known to you. So this is the known part. Now, the probably unknown part or the piece of the generic topic that is probably covered superficially yet is the variance part and uh, if you command click or control click on this list type you would see the list definition as list of plus a what does that mean it means the list answers to the following question let's say i have a class animal and a class dog which extends animal now, because we have the dog, which is a super type, a sub, a subtype of animal, we have the following question. If dog extends animal, which in Scala is represented by this symbol, does a list of dog subtype a list of animal? So if dog is a subtype of animal, is list of dog a subtype of list of animals? This is a question. And this is called the variance question. Meaning that the, the type list can or could transfer the subtype relationship from the generic type to the type itself, to the list itself. So because dog is a subtype of animal, we could in theory, consider a list of dogs to be a list of animals because dogs are animals. So this intuitively makes sense. And if the answer to the variance question is yes, then the type is called covariant. So this is the term that we use for the answer yes to the variance question. And the list type answers yes to the variance question. And in Scala, we denote that by putting a plus sign next to the generic type. Concretely, let me instantiate some dogs. Let's spice this up a bit and let's name this dog. Okay, so I'm adding a constructor argument to the dog and I'm going to instantiate a couple of dogs. Let's say I want to instantiate Lassie as new dog with the name Lassie. I'm going to instantiate Hachi as new dog with the name Hachi. The film Hachiko is very very good and um, the dog Laika as new dog Laika. Dog Laika was the first being sent into outer space. This is pretty pretty awesome. So um, these are quite lucky dogs. Now let me define a val, let's call this my dogs, as, and I'm specifying the type here as a list of animal. And on the right hand side, I'm going to instantiate a list with Lassie, Hachi, and Laika. 
So notice that on the left hand side I'm defining my dogs to be a list of animals and on the right hand side I'm defining a list of dogs. So in much the same way as I'm saying val an animal of type animal equals let's say lassie which is a dog on the right hand side so that is the basic polymorphism that you see in object oriented languages you can transfer the polymorphism capability to the list type by specifying a list on the left hand side by declaring the type of the value as a list of a generic type of a general type and then on the right hand side you have a list of a more concrete type so a list of dog of dogs is a list of animals this is the covariance meaning for the list type. So this was the case for when we answer yes to the variance question. Obviously, because it's a binary question, we also have the no answer. So if no, then the type is called invariant. So it has no covariance relationship and a list of a certain type has no connection to a list of a different type when we talk about a list. So let me define a class. Let's call this my invariant list. And I'm going to add a type argument t to it, meaning that the type is invariant. So my invariant list has a generic type t, which does not have any relationship to any other type. So if I say, for example, my, val, let's call this my dogs as a my invariant list of animal, I cannot on the right hand side say new my invariant list of dog. So even though dog extends animal, meaning that dog is a subtype of animal, the list of dogs is not a list of animals. So the subtyping relationship does not transfer to the list. And uh, if you hover over this error, you will see a message here from the compiler saying expression of type my invariant list of dog doesn't conform to the expected type my invariant list of animal. So this is wrong and the code will not compile, which is why I'm going to comment this out. The only way that this invariant list will compile is if you specify the exact same type both on the left hand side and on the right hand side. So if I said val, let's call this my animals as my invariant list of animal. I absolutely need to specify my invariant list of animal on the right hand side. So new my invariant list of animal. This is the only way that an invariant type will compile is that if you specified something on the left hand side, the same type needs to be there on the right hand side as well. This is the way that generic types are by default. So if you don't specify any type modifier here before the generic type, you will automatically assume that the generic type that you're defining is invariant, much like Java. So Java deals with this by default. Now here's the kicker. Even though the variance question is binary, meaning you can answer it with yes or no, obviously, there's also a third answer to the variance question, which is hell no or no, quite the opposite. And this is called contravariance. Let me show you. So I could I could define a class called my contravariant list of type T with a negative sign before the generic type, not a plus, but a negative sign. This is called a contravariant type. And uh, this type that I defined over here called my contravariant list will transfer the subtyping relationship in the opposite direction, meaning that if dog extends animal, then a list of animals will extend a list of dogs. Let me show you. So if I said my dogs as my contravariant list of dog as new my contravariant list of animal on the right hand side. So this is pretty confusing. Now just to prove this code compiles, let me name this my dogs2 or something like that. And I would eliminate the compiler errors. So if I try to compile this code, the compiler will be perfectly fine with this definition. But uh, even though the compiler is happy, we're probably not happy because it doesn't seem to make any intuitive sense. Why would you have a list of animals subtype a list of dogs and not the other way around? So the covariant list made probably intuitive sense and even the invariant list might make sense because if you've used Java before you, it's probably second nature to you but this this is probably pretty 
pretty weird, at least. So why do we need contravariance and when should we use it? This is the point of this video. So many developers will dismiss the variance concepts and especially the contravariance bit as pretty obscure and uh, purely academic. So uh, if we think about other scenarios of real life, we can actually find some meaning in variance and in contravariance in particular. So let's go back to the dog animal relationship. So we have the animal and the dog subtype and let's try to imagine something else that might ma make sense to be contravariant and I will define a contravariance example and I will define the following type I will define a trait that I'm going to call vet with a negative T vet meaning a doctor that can heal animals so I'm going to define in this trait I'm going to define the method called heal and uh, I'm going to pass an animal as a T and uh, let's say this method returns a boolean the method itself is not so important. The trait vet with a negative T is. And uh, if you are quite versed with generics and type bounds, you can add an optional subtype animal here to restrict the vet type to only those types that are subtype of animal. But I don't really care about that. I'm going to leave it as is. Now, for this vet, I've already taken the freedom of defining it with a negative T already for the following reason. If you ask me, so if you had a thought experiment and you asked me, Daniel, give me a vet for my dog. My dog is sick and I will give you a vet which can heal any animal in the world, not just your dog. Then your dog will probably live because the vet is more than capable of fixing your dog. So I would in Scala, I would say something like this. I would say Val my dog as new dog and let's name this Buddy. And uh, let's assume Buddy is sick and uh, I would require a vet for it. Now let's call this my vet, which is a vet of dog. This is what I require. I need a vet which can heal my dog. And uh, instead I will call a function or, or I would return something that will say new vet of animal with some implementation of heal. So I would say override heal and let's say Let's call this print line, you'll be fine. And finally, I'll, I'll return true because I said the method will return a boolean. All right, so I'm defining a vet of dog. So I'm declaring that my vet is a vet of dog, but on the right hand side, I'm returning a vet where I'm using a vet of animal, meaning that this vet can heal any animal on the planet. Now, because I've obtained my vet from either this construct or from some API call, let's actually extract that to a method. Let's call this, give me a vet. And uh, I will return a vet of dog. And instead I'm gonna return a vet of animal and so on and so forth. And uh, I'm retrieving my vet by calling this API method. So give me a vet. Now, because my vet is seen as a vet of dog, I can simply call the heal method on it. So I'm gonna say my vet dot heal my dog. And it's perfectly fine because I am I know, or the compiler knows that my vet is a vet of dog. And so it can apply the heal method on the dog and make buddy happy. So notice that it makes sense for the vet to be contravariant this time around because I only need a vet of dog, meaning that a vet can act on my dog, can heal my dog. And on the right hand side, I'm given a vet that can heal or can act on anything or any animal, including my dog. And this is why this scenario makes sense. So this is a contravariance example. Now the main question is, when is it best to use covariance and contravariance? Clearly a contravariant list like this doesn't make sense as we saw earlier. And the exact in the exact same style, a vet cannot be covariant because it would break the semantics of this scenario. So as we saw in the code, not every concept can be applicable to co or contravariance. So we need to be mindful when we need to apply which and uh, if there's anything that you can learn for this video I hope it's the following idea follow this rule of thumb if your generic type contains or creates or produces elements of type T it should be covariant 
meaning that you will add a plus sign to t. So it, if it produces elements of type t or contains elements of type t, then it should be covariant. Conversely, if your generic type acts on, like our vet, or consumes in other scenarios elements of type t, it should be contravariant. And let me give you some examples. So some co covariant concepts include a cage, which can hold animals, or a garage, which can hold cars, or a factory, which can produce elements, or a list of or any collection because they can hold elements. So these are covariant concepts, and we worked with the list concept in the code. And examples of co contravariant concepts include a vet, which can heal animals, or a mechanic which can fix cars, or a garbage pit which can consume objects, or a function in the more abstract sense in terms of the argument type because it can act on or it's applied on those arguments. So I hope this screen is what you take away from this video. Alright, so I hope this was useful. I'm Daniel and you can find this article at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog in written form and you can follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn with the links in the description attached to this video. Now I'm dying for feedback so please leave yours in the comments and if you like this video go ahead and subscribe because more videos like this will be coming soon. Until next time, thank you for watching.